Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Zippy Engineering, and I really need a haircut. Uh, this shit's getting out of control. Anyway, so we've done a few shakedown passes on the shovel, and uh, we found some problems. So, <laughs> to say the least. So, uh, first day I really rode to work, uh, I ran out of gas. Uh, you know, a, uh, a Sportster tank that holds like two and a half gallons. Uh, and with the angle that this thing's on, it doesn't hold a lot, especially with the, uh, the place the pet cock is in. Uh, and on my initial fire up, I had pushed some fuel in this thing and apparently I didn't put a lot. So, uh, the wife had to come get me, uh, and I had to go buy yet another gas can. I now own like six gas cans, uh, for various reasons, but... It got us to the point to where I know where I can run the bike uh, and it, and, you know, it not run out of fuel. So uh, we're kind of there, uh, still learning a lot of things about this bike. Uh, it's kind of a finicky bitch, but the biggest part is uh, we went on a ride today. Uh, first off, it started first kick, uh, which is awesome. I'm really tired of kicking the fuck out of this thing because First off, it hurts and it's exhausting and it sucks. Uh, it, it sucks. Um, secondly, uh, my intake, the manifold, the uh, the rubber boots on there. So uh, the guy I bought this from didn't necessarily put the right bolts in there. They're actually like half the size of what they should be. They're like half an inch, uh, which means they did not grab enough thread uh, and they were loose, so I didn't take I didn't take leaks, which is a big no-no, right? So uh, I'm gonna show you guys here. Uh, you can kind of see. I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see way back in here uh, with that top bolt. You see, there's no thread from the bolt actually in the uh, the nut area back there. Uh, whereas you see in the bottom here. These are the ones I replaced uh, at a Wawa uh, after my wife brought me uh, tools and stuff uh, because I have yet to make a tool roll for this thing. Uh, it's definitely on my list of stuff to do, but there's not a lot of room on this bike. Uh, it's, it's really bare bones and uh, we're still trying to figure stuff out. Uh, the biggest thing is uh like when I, we ride on this thing i have to carry my wallet and my phone in my pocket and it sucks right i don't like sitting in my wallet i never have uh most of the time i'm in a vehicle i take it out of my pocket i don't sit on it uh, it throws you off and it's my wallet's not exactly small uh you know but anyways so today uh we rode out to harley and we got this was essentially a bar bag um, but as you see here, I don't really have a very much room to put it as an actual bar bag. So we mounted on the lower part of the forks here. Uh, and actually it seems to do pretty well. Um, it'll give us enough room to put all of our stuff in that we need to travel. Uh, like, like, you know, wallets and phones to call for, uh, backup and assistance when this thing breaks down. Uh, but also eventually I'm gonna put a tool roll in there. So that's that's gonna be our next project But the big issue here is This all right, so this is from the last time I rode So you see back here also there's a big puddle back there from where I parked it uh, That was from our ride yesterday. Uh, we rode about 20 miles when I parked it This is what happened and the reason for that is this transmission all right so this is actually a 65 panhead trans uh this is a 79 shovel motor and an 80 frame so it's kind of an amalgamation of fucking everything this old guy had pardon my language but uh he's an old biker he had like six shovel heads there and uh this is, from what i'm gathering as i go through this thing it's kind of the thing that he had a bunch of extra parts and he put them together into a bike. Um, so this is what we have. Um, so yeah, as you see here, uh, we have a huge oil leak. 
All right, we also have a bunch of stuff back in here. You see there's oil slinging everywhere. The chain has a ridiculous amount of oil on it, which is not good. Um, so we get to fix that. And then also after a few shakedowns, you can see the tire has made contact with our bolts on the inside. So we're gonna have to go switch to like a pan head style Allen head bolt. Um, you know, some with a little more clearance because uh, quite frankly, as you see there, that is the transmission oil that's slung onto the drive chain, or drive chain, which is not good. You can see there's an excess of oil on here. Definitely not good. So, um, something's going on, right? So, also, uh, the other part of this is my clutch basket wobbles. Um... And that's that's no bueno for me uh, i'm not gonna have something that i ride around where uh it has a wobble on the clutch all right so uh the other part of that is well uh, when we when we try and gauge the foot clutch it definitely has uh it's very grabby um and last time i was in this clutch basket i noticed it did not have uh it had the original style bearings uh, and i've been told by several individuals and in doing some research that the long bearings, it's otherwise known as the big fix, uh, is the solution for this thing. Uh, it provides more st stability for the clutch basket and uh, it should help get rid of that wobble. So, also, it's supposed to help the clutch be more stabilized so we stop getting that grabby thing. Uh, the the uh, downfall of this transmission is the four speed, so it's geared high. So. You really have to feather it on uh, first gear when you're taking off. And uh, yeah, there's almost times where you're like, this is way too high gearing. Uh, but that's the way it was developed. And that's how you have to ride it in order to, you know, you get anywhere. So uh, I've ordered a complete rebuild kit of gaskets for, for the transmission. I also ordered a, a big fix uh, bearing kit for the clutch basket. Uh, which includes the long bearings uh, It's like 52 or 53 bearings. Uh, they're literally just rollers uh, They're little needle rollers that you stick in there um, BDL sells it. Um, that's the one I ordered. So we'll see what happens uh, If it doesn't fix our clutch grabbiness issue, then we're gonna put a clutch tamer in it um really hoping it fixes it so i don't want to add more money into this thing because it's uh yeah as many of you know projects will drain your bank account quicker than an ex-wife so uh yeah so uh what we're going to do today uh really it's it's night all right we rode this thing today and it's leaving transmission oil everywhere we go so i need to tear the transmission out and we need to fix this so the plan tonight is, uh, take that guy out. So we have our four speed and, uh, we're going to take it out. Um, while in the process, all right, we're going to drain our oil tank here and I'm going to remake this line because it's the only rubber line on here. The rest are copper. They seem to be holding up pretty well. Granted, I don't have a lot of miles on this thing yet, but I don't see any leaks uh except for this vent line because it's kind of hard mount and it's not really very tight but it's a vent line uh as long as it gets you know air into the motor it doesn't really matter but we're gonna take this bitch out and uh once we get the parts we're gonna rebuild it so stay tuned
All right, so now you see that we have the transmission out. Uh, there's a lot of naysayers on the internet that say you cannot pull this transmission with the oil tank still in because it takes just as long, blah, 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 blah. But as you see, I just tore that bitch out in probably half an hour. Uh, honestly, it took me longer to make this little tool here to pull the clutch basket off. Or the, yeah, this here, then uh, it did actually pull the transmission. So, uh, yeah. If people say it can't be done, well, maybe you should try it. Um, instead of listening to what people on the internet always tell you. So, now, here we go. Uh, so, I have to get a socket for this guy because the one I have is not big enough. Or it's not long enough. Um, it takes that deep well. Um, and then from there, uh, we'll see what happens. But, I know for a fact this top cover is leaking. Uh, because... Uh, when after I run it you can see that there's weeping along this this top cover So we'll pull that off of uh, Honestly, that may be our entire culprit but um, From everything I've read these four speeds like to leak a lot on this main shaft. So uh, We'll tear it all apart um, Also third gear likes to grind uh, unless I red match it so uh, why not tear into it so stay tuned okay so I got the lid off our transmission here um so like I've been suspecting it was weeping around these this gasket as you can see uh, there's definitely some leakage going here here up here it's dry down here it is very very wet um, not the wetness you want so uh, my theory was that whole thing was running down to here, but I'm still going to pull the sprocket off and check this uh, seal. Uh, the guy told me this thing had been rebuilt. Uh, you know you know how those words go with people. So, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to tear this thing a little further once, uh, once I get the tooling. But this right here is definitely uh, part of our problem. The, uh, the bolts weren't exactly tight. So, um, I, I don't know why, but yeah, they weren't, they weren't as tight as they needed to be, obviously. So, cause it looks like a fairly new gasket there. So, uh, we'll tear in this thing a little bit more and, uh, see what we can find. Okay. So I think my leak was coming from this top cover. Uh, the, like I said before, the bolts weren't exactly tight. They were just kind of snug. Um, also, I didn't really find any oil behind the sprocket, uh, which if I think they're, you know, this, this seal, which is the main one to go, uh, if it was going to be the culprit, there would be oil back here, but there's not. Um, there is this one up here on the front. Um, it does have some shit on it, but, uh, on the front of this nut, but once we get our, our stuff back in, uh, we'll fix that one. Uh, but this was definitely leaking on top. So what I've done is the gasket still looks good. I put Yama Bond on the bottom. Uh, I put a little Yama Bond on the lid. Um, so if you see right here, this is a 52 lid. Uh, it's a 65 uh, case. Who knows what year the internals are? I'm assuming they're a 65. I don't know. Uh, but it's a 52 lid. So uh, it's a little bit of everything here. So, um, there are some scratches and stuff, some kind of gouges in the lid, and also in the body. Um, this, if this cover, it looks like it's been polished. So, somebody's went at this thing. So, uh, we'll use this Yama Bond, or the, yeah, the Yama Bond, and, uh, you know, kind of fill those little voids, essentially. Um, Yama Bond's some pretty... Some pretty badass stuff, so but we'll uh we'll get this thing all back together and then we'll see where it puts us. Hopefully it it doesn't leak anymore, but it's uh it is a shovel head and uh they leak. So, you know, 
is what it is but uh yeah so we'll go ahead and uh clean all these bolts up some of them are pretty pretty gross because they have fluid and stuff on them um this thing's been leaking obviously so um yeah we'll get this thing all put together and go from there this is our uh, breather breather bolt here. Uh, this allows this transmission to breathe. Um, he had it in this hole. Now whether that's the right one, honestly, I have no idea. Uh, but we're gonna go back with this one. Uh, all the other ones I've seen they've had up here. So, but honestly, I I don't think it really cares as long as it gets into one of the case, one of the bolts that goes through the case and allows this thing to breathe. Um, honestly, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, it shouldn't really have to be in any specific spot. One kind of other thing to note, um, the oil inside, the gear oil, definitely has a metallic sheen uh, going on with it. So something in there is possibly eating itself. Um, now, what exactly that is, I have yet to know. Um, but like I said before, third gear we did have to rev match. But with the amount of silver metallic that's going on in this thing, you know, I don't I don't really think that's what's causing it. Um and because I didn't see any damage to third gear. All the gears look pretty good. Uh he like I said before, he did say that this thing was rebuilt. Uh it could just be, you know, break-in wear or whatever that the you know for that metallic color going on that's you know i mean that's that's why you do break-in periods right and you change the oil and then you move on um and then hopefully you do one change and then it's all gone and you don't have to worry about it anymore but we'll see all right i don't i don't really know how these what the habits of these old these old bikes are um, still learning all that but as you all have seen but hopefully we'll get her all buttoned up because there's one thing i do not enjoy with any of my projects regardless of what it is is leaks um, i do not enjoy oil leaks especially when the stuff's new uh, whenever it's all being rebuilt like that's it's the most infuriating i mean i'm sure many of you that have actually they have rebuilt your stuff or you know rebuilt cars and whatnot you get all together and then you start her up and you're like yes perfect and then you have a leak and you're like well this is not how this was supposed to go uh, but then, you know that's part of the game that's part of uh shall we say the fun of, of figuring all this out right so um like i said beginning of this these these bolts weren't exactly tight they were kind of they were kind of hand tight so really a, i think this might be most of our problem here um but we're uh we're gonna put this whole thing back together and i'm gonna put it back in the bike because really it doesn't take very long to take everything apart um and we'll see how it goes uh, i gotta do a little trimming on that uh clutch lever anyway that uh i hadn't gotten around to yet so <clears throat> this here is that clutch rod that uh we had made from that fork that goes inside here and it fits on here uh, but as you've seen we have not shaped this yet so i welded it and stuck it on stuck it on there um mainly to make sure there's nothing else need to be done to it but we still need to shape this thing um, because it's still from when I cut this off 
Uh, again, this is a hardened piece, so this will be fun to to shape. But uh, once we have that done, this this part will be done. All right. I probably probably should paint this, but I think we're just gonna leave it raw. So, but um, yeah, we got the transmission all back together. Um, wipe off what little bit of squeeze out we have uh i definitely like the yama bond or even honda bond um just because it's that liquid uh gasket material it um it does really well uh it's it's not really like silicone where it makes a huge freaking mess um but it does really well for metal to metal contact usually because usually use it for like case halves um you know on, on dirt bikes and whatnot so but it should work pretty well in this uh to fill in any sort of of gaps there could be from where uh somebody went ham on this thing with a you know with an angle grinder or whatever so but we got all back together and uh, we'll see if it leaks now. All right, so you see, we already have our transmission back in. Uh, that literally took like five minutes to put in, uh, but everything's still loose. So we got to put our plate back down, our adjustment plate. Uh, so we didn't move anything, so everything should go back in place. We shouldn't have to make any adjustments and uh, should be good to go. Uh, after this, we're going to ride this thing tomorrow and uh hopefully it doesn't leak if it does guess what we're tearing everything back out and starting over but we'll see so yeah
uh, everything's all back together. I uh, did uh, replace these bolts. Uh, the previous ones, the heads weren't exactly uh, nice. Uh, as you saw at the very beginning of the video, I had to take a little hammer and tap them in there, tap the Allen wrench in there. So we replaced those. I had those on hand. Uh, I'd plan on doing it at some point, but just hadn't gotten around to it yet. So um, got everything all back together. I did shape our clutch arm over here. It's now not uh, this big, awful looking thing. It actually has a pretty nice teardrop shape to it. So um, probably need to get a smaller washer or cut this one down just because that thing looks huge. But it works. Uh, got everything else back together and uh, yeah so our uh, transmissions all back together it's back in the bike we will see uh, we'll see how stuff does uh, the oil level is still full so hopefully tomorrow you know fingers crossed we uh, that will fix our oil leak and we won't have to go too deep into this thing uh, as you saw there the, when I actually tore it apart uh, this already does have the big fix uh, roller bearings in it. So uh, that was a nice surprise. I uh, really was not expecting that when I took it apart. Um, so that saved me like 40 bucks. Uh, but as you saw, it's a huge pain in the ass to put back together. There's like 50 something rollers. Uh, you got to put each one in individually. You know, I put, I put a little bit of, um, it was high temp bearing grease in there just a little bit. Uh, if you saw the basket at the beginning, uh, they had packed that, uh, previously, looks like they put a good amount of grease in there and it slung over the inside of the, uh, basket, but luckily nothing got on the plates, on the steels or on the discs, so everything was good to go there. So we got some more grease in there, uh, hopefully it'll be long enough to last for a while, uh, until we do like periodic maintenance, which... I need to figure out what that is for this thing but uh that should do it and uh tomorrow we will find out if it leaks hopefully it doesn't but we shall see so here's to tomorrow night